Colonials, as we mentioned to you at the beginning of the game, won the toss, elected to defer, so they will begin the second half with the ball, and it is picked up at about the 27-yard line. The officials do not call it down. The run back to about the 36-yard line. Interesting play there, Greg. The, the kick low and on the ground taken by one of the up men. And although he touched it while he was down, he didn't take position until he actually had stepped up off of his knee. So I think that's probably an accurate call. And a, a, a smart play right there by you know, the up man to make sure that he was standing up, number one. And number two, if he had had any trouble picking up that ball, just fall on it, take your field position, you would have been at the 30. You know, but he made sure he had the ball and got six or seven yards forward. And Greg, I believe this is the Colonials' best field position of the game, starting at their own 36-yard line, although the one drive might have been the 39. Boy, I tell you, look at that drive to the outside. Best pickup of the day, that's for sure, for Plymouth White Marsh. The ball carrier that time, I believe, number 27, Justin Pratt, Well, P.W. coming off of that right side to start the second half, you know, coming out aggressive. And Coach Giacovetti had to have said something at, the, you know, at halftime. We're going to come out, and we have the ball first. Let's try and put points on the board and scare this team right Absolutely, off the absolutely. A score here would be critical to the course of momentum in this ball game. Just beginning the second half of playing, Greg, the rain has stopped now. The umbrellas are away for the most part and um, perhaps conditions will improve a little bit. Travellini in motion takes the, takes the ball, and I'll tell you what, he is hit hard by Lou Samba. I'll tell you what, nice stick and a loss on the play. Coaches, coaches will smile when they see that they have two linebackers that can hit hard, and Lou Samba and Jamil Butler are those two linebackers. Jamil Butler is the captain of this, of this whole defense, but Lou Samba is the guy who's going to step in next year and be a real good linebacker because he's done it this year and he's really taken his position at that linebacking spot and of course with only two linebackers in your defense it's an important spot for Norristown and Samba's done such a great job this year. Well I'll tell you what we've got the measurement out there I had um, I had called a loss on that play but actually his uh, forward momentum the way he fell forward allowed him to pick up close to a yard and that's what he needed it's going to be third and inches it looks like from about the 46 yard line. So the Eagle defense will be tested here a bit as the Colonials marching towards midfield. The quarterback, Steve Fulmer, has done a nice job of controlling the offense, has not had uh, any issues with fumbles or, or botched, um, uh, botched handoffs, anything with the transition from the center to the quarterback. So he's done a good job of keeping the game moving forward. I'll tell you, that's a first down. Uh, that looked like number 27, Justin Pratt, on the carry. And give PW a lot of credit. The first minute of this second half, you've seen them come out and you've seen them stick to what they want to do. They're running the ball. They're not trying to do anything spectacular to put points on the board. They're not going to start throwing the ball 60 yards deep. They're not going to start, you know, double reverses. They're going to stick to the running game. And they know that their offensive line has to do a little bit better of a job to clear off the line. And they're starting to push Norristown back a little bit in this first minute and a half. Something Norristown's really got to look at. So with the single setback, the Colonials will have first and 10 from their own 47. Fulmer under pressure, gets it off, complete. Nice pass under pressure by quarterback Steve Fulmer. And I'll tell you what, Hadrick a nice hit there, but that's a great play across the middle. That's a great route run there by Look like number receiver. 32, Tim Fleming. Yeah, he's, the, he's listed as the tight end and that's a great route to run. You don't, you don't see high school quarterbacks throw their tight end a lot. You know, we've seen some tight ends come in here. I remember a couple years ago, we had one from Truman that was about 260 pounds. Just huge guys. But you don't see tight ends getting the ball to them a lot. That's a great route right there. And it gets you a first down, and it's real safe. Travellini in motion. Pratt gets the handoff, slips the first tackle. And I'll tell you what, the Eagles had good penetration there. But Pratt, good forward momentum. Nice pickup on the play. And the Colonials moving into Norristown territory. Excellent job here on this initial drive of the second half. We're going to call that only about a, a long two, perhaps a three-yard pickup on the play to make it second and eight. And PW has got to be ecstatic with what they're doing right now. You know, they've gotten the ball to Norristown's side of the field, something in the day we were having a tough time doing in the first half. To even get to here has got to be a victory. 
in your mind, even if you don't get points out of this, but you know that's what they want. Inside the Narstown 35, second down. This time the handoff again slips the tackle. I tell you, the, uh, the Colonial running backs doing a great job of putting forth second effort. And again, close to a first down. Going to make it third and a yard. And missed tackles will lead to bigger plays. A couple of missed tackles over there on that left side. Travellini just slipping by a couple of guys. It, as you start to get later on in the game, it gets more and more important that you have to wrap up the running back. Because the running back will always want to get the yards, and you'll notice on the defensive side of the ball that your legs will start to get a little bit sluggish. You want to make sure you wrap up the guy and really make sure that you make the tackle yourself. Well, that didn't happen the last two plays from scrimmage, and it's now third and one for the Colonials. The handoff again goes to Pratt, close to the first down. He's tied up nicely on the inside that time by Samba, along with number 59, Eric Benitez. A big hole opened up right there by Dave Yorgi and Walt Horton. They cleared that side off. You could see two or three yard gap that uh, Travellini had right there when he ran up the middle just clearing the Norristown linemen off the ball. When you have five linemen, five defensive linemen, you have to make sure that you don't get pushed back. When you get pushed back, you get pushed back in your linebackers, they get pushed back in the backfield, it opens up some holes. And the Colonials clearly with their best offensive possession of this game, they did zero in the first half with the ball. Uh, only, only had the ball for a very short period of time, but they've done a fantastic job of moving the ball downfield. Now down to the Norristown 25-yard line, first and 10 on the option. Fulmer, oh, he is hit by Butler and followed up by Benitez. Nice one-two punch there by the Norristown defense. There will be a loss on the play. That is Jamil's, Jamil Butler's job. He's got to make sure he makes that play on the outside, and he did. He, he hit him hard, and I think that if Benitez wasn't coming, Butler still would have made that play, still would have grabbed him and made the tackle. But Benitez doing a nice job of staying with the play and making sure the tackle was completely made. But once again, a great play by Junior Butler from his linebacker position. Make sure Fulmer didn't get up the field. So loss of one brings up second and 11 for the Colonials. Again, inside the Narstown 30-yard line. Driving for the first time in this game. Travellini in motion. Pratt in the backfield. The straight drop. They look up top. He's got time. Man over the middle. Almost picked off. And I'll tell you what. That young man had his eye on the ball. Sheldon Gray had a beat on that ball coming across the middle. It was intended for Elzar Campbell, Camper, but underthrown by Fulmer. And Camper was wide open in the middle. He made a little in cut. He had about five yards in the middle, and that's Sheldon Gray's job at that safety position. <laughs> Great quickness to read the ball. He saw it coming, and he saw that it was low. Just make sure you get in front of the ball, make sure nothing spectacular happens, and he almost had an interception. He certainly did, and it brings up third and 11 from the Eagle 27-yard line. Two wide outs. They put Frank in motion. Pratt in the backfield. Fulmer again with the straight drop. He has time. He goes up top into double coverage. Picked off. Intercepted by number nine, Trey Hadrick. And I'll tell you what, you can see that coming all the way. Great coverage back there for the Eagles. Number 25, Terry Powell, the primary defender. And Hadrick up in the air, used his uh, position to his advantage and comes up with a big interception. On third and 11, I figured PW was gonna throw the ball. And you know, I don't wanna give myself too much credit, but I was looking at Trey Hadrick the whole time and he was reading everything. He saw Fulmer look to that right side. He saw his receiver going down there. Just, that's great safety play. He did everything a safety is supposed to do. He watched the eyes of the quarterback. He watched where he was going. He watched his feet and he read the play and stepped in when he had to. And to go up and get that ball is really a nice job by Hadrick. So the Eagles with their second takeaway of the game, but they are deep in their own territory at the four yard line. Swittenberg up the middle, nothing doing there. Picks up maybe, maybe two on the play. It'll be second and eight for the Eagles. And right now you got to protect the ball. And Norristown's got to make sure that they don't do anything spectacular. They, they were back on their heels and they're very lucky that they got the turnover right there to prevent points from PW. Coach Grove really has to be, I guess, has to accept what he got from his defense and really has got to try and work from there. So it's 6-13 to play in the third quarter, a scoreless tie. The Eagles deep 
in their own territory, but with the ball, the pitch, a dangerous play <laughs> back towards your own end zone, but very shorthanded. I'll tell you, Stewart and Swittenberg certainly know the routine. They know the drill. Swittenberg picks up very little on that play as well to bring up third and long for the Eagles. Once again, PW saw that they saw that pitch and they knew that Swittenberg, if he gets open on that pitch, you know, he will get a lot of yardage. And PW doing a great job of getting off of their blocks and getting into that far sideline. That's one of the things that I've been amazed about today. They have not allowed that play to work. It has not worked for more than 10 yards, which we've seen a lot happen. That pitch play has not gotten Norristown the yardage that they need. So third and eight for Norristown from their own six yard line. The play action. Stewart rolls out again across his body. Goes up top, man open, caught. Great catch. Beautiful play by number 17, James Edmonds, in single coverage back there. And I'll tell you what, Edmonds, it looked like he might have had a little soft push off there, but not enough to be of any consequence. But James Edmonds is an experienced receiver. He knows what he can get away with and what he can't get away with. And James Edmonds will probably be the first person to tell you if he pushes a guy down trying to go after the ball, he will be the first one to tell you, you know, I pushed off, I deserve that. But he did a great job of you know, wait until the last second to get that little push. Just ate up his defensive back, but another great ball by Audley Stewart. That's a 33-yard gain on the play. First and 10 for the Eagles from out close to the 40-yard line. Stewart with the option. He's got um, Swittenberg out front, and it really didn't much matter. Great pursuit by the Colonials. Deep into the backfield was Pratt, number 27. Norristown's got to find another way to try and get the ball to the outside. It is just not working coming from under center. And one of the ways you do that is you can line Troy Swittenberg up to the far sideline. You can try and use him as a receiver, run that little screen pass that we've seen them run to Terrell today. You can do many other things, but you've got to try and free up Troy Swittenberg, I think. And one of the ways you do that is line him up as a receiver. Audley Stewart lost a yard on that carry. It's going to be second and 11 for the Eagles. So Narstown with their first offensive touch of the second half. This game is moving incredibly fast, folks. A lot of play on the ground, not a lot of stoppages, and really, I don't recall we've had a penalty today. Ah, the, uh, the option play, the halfback option, worked to, to some success last week, I guess, against Upper Murray, and Ricky Preet, number four, was looking downfield for number 88, Ernie Terrell, and Preet just um, didn't have everything on that throw. It was well underthrown, incomplete third down. It was also 70 degrees and very dry last week, and that's a tough play for Ricky Preet to make. You know, he's coming around that far sideline, and when he got the ball, it looked like he didn't have it exactly where he wanted it. He had to kind of turn it around. I don't think he had a great grip on it when he let go of it. However, Terrell did have his man beat by two steps. It's also tough for a guy who's been playing wide receiver all year to throw a deep ball 40 yards to a man streaking down the sidelines. Well, I'll tell you, it was a gutsy play. You said they had to mix it up a little bit, and they did, so they listened to you. Now, Eagles out of the shotgun. They fake the quick hit. Audley Stewart looks up top, got his man open, first down. I'll tell you what, what an impressive tandem Audley Stewart and, Ern and pardon me, and James Edmonds make. That, that's a, that's a well-thrown ball, and sure hands from James Edmonds picks up the first down. PW's got to do something to stop that player over the middle. Norristown is exposing it right now. They are running James Edmonds over the middle to the far sidelines. They're finally using James Edmonds. It's amazing. They used him so much last year, and unfortunately, they haven't been able to find really, you know, people finally found out how to cover him, and he's doing a great job of getting open today. In his last game, he's doing a, uh, having one of his best ones. Again, they go to the shotgun. Stewart, under pressure, is going to be sacked. Boy, I'll tell you, what a, what a back and forth game it has been today. After that big third down conversion, third and 11, they break it into colonial territory and a huge loss. It's going to be about a 10 yard loss on the play, bringing up second and 20 for Norristown. That was Walt Horton coming off at the end. It, if you have that much, if you're standing back there for that much time, something's probably going to happen. The defense is going to get to you. You've got to try and, you know, obviously get rid of the ball quicker. And especially against PW, they are going to keep coming after you. You only have a good probably three to five seconds to have a play develop. And unfortunately, didn't happen right there for Norristown. So with 2.20, pardon me, 2.30 to play in the third quarter, we are seeing quite a defensive battle out here on a wet, rainy, sloppy day at Roosevelt Field. 
scoreless tie through nearly three quarters of play. Again, Coach Grove staying with the shotgun formation. A high snap, but Stewart grabs it to the outside. Nicely thrown and complete. They picked up the money that, the, pardon me, the yardage that they lost. That was Ernie Terrell on the sideline. So that was a little banker's Freudian slip there. You know, I pick up the money, <laughs> picked up the yardage call that they what, lost, plus a couple more. Call it whatever you wanted. It's a first down, but great blocking. Walt Horton, or excuse me, not a first down. It, it was the first pylon that they that they crossed oh, back. They, excuse they me. had lost 10 on the first one. So. I was too busy making fun of you. I yeah, so now it's third and nine, myself. Mr. Big Shot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Walt Horton got to the quarterback on the last play, and they double teamed him that time. Jamil Butler and Lou Samba just manhandled him, left time for Audley Stewart. And Audley Stewart would have seen Walt Horton coming, except two great blocks. They keep the guys back. The ball is batted, incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. I'll tell you what, the Colonials are coming hard off of that line, and a great push that they're getting off of that uh, defensive line. They kept Swittenberg back to block. They had everybody back to block, and it didn't matter. The penetration worked, and it's fourth and nine for the Eagles from the Colonial 45-yard line. Well, they left two guys to block. Unfortunately, they weren't the problem. The problem was that the line did not get did not get to the defensive lineman and cut them down a little bit. And of course, what makes passing go is the fact that you have to get them down and you have to try and get their hands down. You have to tie them up. And unfortunately right there, the lineman got his hand up and blocked that pass. Good snap to Hadrick. He's got plenty of time. Nice high end over end kick taken by Travellini at his own 14. And he's got room to the outside. Good open field tackle by number 77 for Narstown, Kirk Berry. Kirk Berry made a great play. That could have been very big. Ricky Preet was the first man downfield. Unfortunately, you know, with the wet conditions, he slipped, leaving Travellini with some with some space. And to see a big man like Kirk Berry, you know, he's listed as 6'4", 220. See a 220-pound man make a diving tackle. That's pretty athletic. It was a very athletic play, and the Colonials have decent field position here. First and 10 from their own 30-yard line. So Coach Iacovetti looking to see if his squad can replicate the solid drive they had to begin the, the second half of play. 1.58 to go here in the third quarter. The wideouts are to the left. Long count by Fulmer. The handoff goes off the right side to Pratt. Nice pickup on the play. About five yards. It'll bring up second and a short five. And we talked about it before. That last drive that PW had had. That took them 50 or 60 yards. They didn't get any points out of it, but stepping onto the field with 140 in the third quarter, you're thinking to yourself, if we went 60, let's try and go 65. Let's try and keep, you know, keep our, you know, our momentum on offense moving. You know, we've got a great defense that's starting to back up on their heels because they know that we can move the ball against them. The Colonials now second and five from their 35-yard line. Fulmer. The handoff to Pratt once again. First down. I'll tell you, Justin Pratt really did, fulfilling his role as a workhorse today. He's brought down by Jamil Butler on the bottom of the pile. But two nice pickups there create a first down for Plymouth White Marsh. Offensive line of PW really starting to get aggressive. They're starting to push forward. Uh, they're starting to get that, that second wind here in the second half. They're, they realize that if they push forward some more, get their running back some more yardage, PW is an offense that knows they're not going to have 40 to 50 yard running plays. They know it's going to be five to six, and that's when they're at their best, when they're getting those five to six, you know, little chunks of yardage. They want to make sure that they don't get go negative and that they don't only get one or two. I'll tell you, number 15, Elzar Camper, Camper rather, is a little too clean out there. He needs to get into the ball game for the Colonials. Nice run off the left side, little misdirection. Ooh, that's a little late in the play. Guys coming flying over the pile. No flags, though. Greg, have we had a penalty in this game? I don't remember. I any. don't recall a single flag. I think the referees want to keep the flags clean. Yeah, yeah. They won't have they won't have to launder the yellow flags today. They, none none have fallen on the field yet. We've only got about 10 seconds remaining here in the um, in the third quarter. Don't know that we're going to have a play. Nope, we'll definitely won't have a play. Coach Iacovetti's not giving any imperative to his squad. We'll let time run out here in the third quarter. So after three full quarters, we are still scoreless at a soggy Roosevelt field. Once again, we want to remind you this game brought to you by the Narstown Area School District. Mr. Tony Coya, the Director of Communications. Mr. Sam Galbraith, our director today. And our cameramen doing a fine job, Mark Stong and J.J. Sprouse. 
I'm Jeff Brandon along with Greg Fry bringing you Thanksgiving Day high school football, a staple for many years in this area. It went away for a little bit, but it's been back for the past three as the Eagles and the Colonials have squared off in this matchup. And we've certainly seen a good ball game today, Greg. It's not, not real good for those who are offensively minded, but it has been a good football game, fairly well played under difficult conditions. Well, I have to say that it's not two teams who just don't have the, the potential to score. It's two teams who have the potential to score but two defenses that are just playing up to the, the greatest potential they can play up to today. Just an amazing, you know, shutout for both teams through three quarters. Both defenses have got to be happy, but both offenses have got to be thinking, wow, we have 12 minutes, and then we might go into overtime. we got to try and get points on the board. There might be a little bit more of a sense of urgency from Norristown and a little bit more of the patience that Coach Iacovetti and PW have really showed today, you know, they think that if they keep playing, as long as they hold Norris down, they'll eventually get in the end zone. Second down and a long seven. This time it was the quick hit up the middle. Pratt found some room. Great run that time by Justin Pratt. Across the Norris Town 49, down at the Eagle 39-yard line. And there's the misdirection. Norris Town had no idea who had the ball until Pratt was 10 yards up the field. You got it and a huge play right there for PW. One of, their, one of the few plays that's gone for more than 10 yards for them today. That's a big, big offensive play, and they really sold it in the backfield. I'll tell you what, it was very tough to pick out who, who was coming out of that pile with the ball. And give credit to Coach Iacovetti, he has really mixed up the play calling today. We've seen every variation off of that play, and that quick hit, the quick handoff up the middle to Pratt, very successful. Frank goes in motion. They go to Pratt again, and this time he is tied up in the backfield. Comes, falls forward for a gain, but that was number seven, Lou Samba, from his linebacker position well, making he, the play. He flew through there like a rocket. He was the first guy to get to the, the ball carrier right there, and even before Steve Fulmer knew that he handed off the ball, he saw Lou Samba coming, and a great play right there by the linebacker. And a big stop after the big play to slow down the PW offense. It'll be second and nine after that short gain by the Colonials. Elzar Campbell wide to the right. Ricky Preet defending him. Fulmer up top going to Camper. He's got his man beat. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Boy, I'll tell you, that was mighty close. The Colonial fans were up on their feet after that play. Fulmer with a nice pass to Camper, and I tell you, he was, he was tightly defended, but did a great job of using his height to his advantage, brought it down, but he did not have the opportunity to come down in bounds. Well, Jeff, on Norristown's last offensive series, Oily Stewart limped off the field, and he's making sure he can get back on the field as the quarterback. They put Ricky Preet out there, a very athletic quarterback, but a guy who hasn't had to cover a big receiver it, probably ever in his high school career. It, real tough to come in and have to face Elzar Camper, who gets a lot of yardage. You know, poor, PW saw that mismatch over there, and they tried to expose it. Yes, they did, and poor Elzar Camper, who I've probably called Campbell three or four times today, will try very hard not to do it for the rest of the game. Third and nine from the Eagle 39-yard line. Travellini in motion to the near side. Pratt stays back to block. Fulmer steps up into the pocket. He's going to try and run. I tell you, he can see that flag, but somebody said no, and that somebody was number 77, Kirk Berry, the same guy who we, we saw make the athletic stop on the, the punt return, did a great job of open field tackling right there and probably saved the first down. And the, line, the linemen saw him running. Their receivers were 15 yards down the field. They were going to go deep with a pass. They weren't going to do a little five or six yard dump off pass. And the linemen really had to make sure they got the full. And like you said, Jeff, or he would have had a first down. Well, I'll tell you what, it's now fourth and five from the 35-yard line. And a little, um, little question mark there for a second, Greg, about what Coach Iacovetti might do. It seemed that he was perhaps going to go for a first down. We've got a flag on the play now. Delay a game against the Colonials. Yeah, that's... And, and perhaps that's not a problem. Maybe Coach Iacovetti's not too concerned about having it back up five yards. He's going to punt it anyway. But I think he and his coaches were talking it over on, on that far side of the field, trying to decide whether it made sense at this stage of the game with less than 10 minutes to play. Am I going to be this close again? Well, Or do you place your faith in your defense and I, try and pin them back deep? I realize that I'm not getting paid the money to be a, a football coach, but in my mind, you make Norristown go as 
far as they have to go. They've had no problem going 50 yards. They've had a problem going 70 or 80 today. I think you've got to make them go the extra 20 to 30 yards to get their touchdown. So you're saying you agree with the decision to punt here? Absolutely. And it probably is the, the most prudent decision, and it's well placed. Nice corner kick by the the quarterback, Fulmer, who doubles as the punter, and it's out of bounds inside the Narstown 10-yard line. I'll tell you, Coach Iacovetti is going to put the faith in his defense right here. If his squad can stop Narstown, he should wind up with excellent field position late in the game. You've got 9.42 to play. Um, the Eagles, really, this might be their last touch. And, and it's big for Narstown to realize that, you know, that might happen. They have to realize that you don't have to get points in the next two minutes. You are still tied in this ball game. You know, you control it now with 942. You're in control. You can take all 942 to go 90 yards. You don't have to take 30 seconds to go 90 yards. I'll tell you what, though. Audley Stewart is really limping as he came onto the field. Obviously, he is not at 100%. I wonder to we'll see if that will affect the Eagles' offensive offensive play here. The pitch goes to Swittenberg. Swittenberg has really been contained today, Greg. Um, in the first half, 48 yards. He got the yardage he needed to break that 5,000-yard plateau. But I'll tell you what, give, give a lot of credit to the pursuit the Colonials have put forward. Here's a guy that routinely gains 200 yards in a game, yeah. and, and he has not been a factor today. It, it, it. Give the coaches a lot of credit for PW. They came in this game, they knew what they had to do. And right now, with all these stewards' ankle appearing to be not in great shape, what more can Norristown do? They look for them to go to Swittenburg a little bit more to try and, you know, not let Stewart do much work. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Swittenburg was tied up again. I am amazed at how the Colonials have been able to penetrate the Eagle backfield off of that pitch. The pitch is simply not developing for Narstown. We have a stoppage on the field, timeout called by the Colonials. That's interesting. They want to make sure they put a stop on the Eagles here on this third and long. Oh, actually, uh, the officials called it incorrectly initially. They said timeout Colonials. It's timeout Narstown. 9.21 to play here in the game, and Coach Grove out to talk to his squad. Greg, it's third and seven from the Eagle 12-yard line. Troy Swittenberg had three solid runs right in a row there. He picked up 11 yards, 9 yards, 15 yards. And if you take those three runs away, he's done virtually nothing today. Um, certainly not for lack of effort, but by the great job put forth by the Colonial defenders. They are all over the Eagle backfield. And they, they really have been dominating on the line today. That offensive line, like you said, Jeff, opened up three plays for Swittenberg. But just, there's not that, there's not that flash, there's not that potential to have any kind of big play. And it's not, like you said, that Troy Swittenberg isn't, you know, working hard to try and get those yards. But we talked about it earlier. He's not getting the initial two or three that leads to the big 20-yarder. He's, they're not even letting him get past the line of scrimmage. They're hitting him at the line of scrimmage and making him only go two after that instead of having the five yards and then getting two after that and having seven and having them start to add up after a while. So after the timeout, it's third and seven for Narstown. They go to the shotgun again. Stewart takes the snap. Quick penetration. Swittenberg picks up the block. The intended receiver, Ricky Preet, just underthrown a bit. Preet made an athletic dive to try and reel it in, but nothing doing. And number five, Steve Fulmer, who doubles as the Colonial quarterback, was there on the coverage. So the Eagles will be forced to punt, and Coach Iacovetti's decision on their prior offensive possession looking to be the right one. And, of course, the defensive coordinators over there for PW, they realized that Ollie Stewart's ankle is not in great shape right now. They knew that Norristown was going to run the ball to try and get yardage, to try and get Ollie Stewart, you know, until his ankle starts to feel a little bit better. Oh, that's a high kick by Trey Hadrick. It's going to be out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, perhaps not even that far. They spotted at the Norristown 33. So great field position. Colonials actually picked up two yards by punting the ball. When they punted the ball, they were at the 35-yard line. They took the five-yard delay a game penalty, kicked from the 40, they get it back at the 33. That's a strategy that worked. And, and Jeff, you were talking about the, big, the, the break that might happen for PW. That was it. With 9.06 left, Narsom's got to be thinking to themselves, you know, we have, we're in some trouble here. If PW's only got to go, you know, let's call it 35 yards, it's tough for a defense to have to stop a team that only has to go that short of a distance. 
So first and 10 for Plymouth White Marsh from the Eagle 34 yard line. Chris Frank in motion, the quick hit up the middle to Pratt. Good yardage again, I'll tell you what, they have used that play effectively in the second half. Big gain on the play. That line clearing off once again. We've given credit to a lot of guys, but Tim Ramey and Chris Ferns doing a great job just pushing that defensive line back. They've got to try and get some pressure, bring, a couple, bring the linebackers up, do something. But the defensive coordinators for Norristown have to think of a way to get more pressure into that backfield. They've got to try and get a couple guys there before the ball carrier can get three or four yards. Six yards on the play, down to the Norristown 28-yard line, bring up second and four for the Colonials. Elzar Camper wide to the right, everybody else in close. Fulmer, the handoff again. There's penetration by Samba, but Pratt slips it. Samba can't believe he didn't bring that guy down. But I'll tell you, we've seen that repeatedly here in this second half, Greg. The Eagles have had the penetration, but have been unable to complete the tackle. And Lou Samba's done a great job. It, you can't say enough about him, but I hate to say it, that's a tackle that has to be made. At this point, you've got to make a big play. And Norrison just can't get, seem to get it on defense. That big play that's stopping PW right now. And they've gotten big plays all game, the interceptions, the stops on fourth down. But this is one time when they really need a big one. And on third and one, it's a great chance for it. So third and one from the Norristown 25-yard line. Fulmer, the handoff, first down. Looks like Pratt got where he needed to go. And I'll tell you what, the Colonials have been very effective in that regard today on short yardage. They have done what they have to do. They've pushed off the line of scrimmage, and they have converted. And unlike Norristown, PW is not going for a lot of negative yardage today. Norristown, on those pitches to the outside and some of the plays that Ole Stewart has rolled out, you know, they have not gotten back to the line of scrimmage. PW always makes sure they get one or two, just pushing up the middle, and a good push from the line once again gets another first down. Well, the Colonials have really kept it between the tackles today, by and large. The the plays that have gone to the outside have been the, the, the quarterback option play once or twice, but they have, they have been taking it straight up the field at Norristown and with some success here in the second half. 6.46 to go in this ball game. The Colonials first and 10 from the Eagle 24. There's the option. There's Samba on Fulmer, and Samba does the job this time. Quarterback Steve Fulmer around the left end, and Samba dragging behind him, pulls him down after a gain of a yard. The play there is just make sure the quarterback doesn't beat you. When the quarterback rolls out and gets 30 yards, you know, it should never happen, honestly. And right there, of course, Samba doing a great job of making sure Fulmer didn't cut up field. He's done that a couple times today, doing a great job of reading that quarterback option. So it'll be second and nine for Plymouth White Marsh. And it is getting tougher and tougher to see those numbers on the uh, the now brown jerseys of the formerly home white or away white uniforms. This time the quick hit up the middle does not go very far. Jamil Butler and his teammate Eric Benitez in on the in on the stop after a pickup of about three yards. We'll call it third and six from the Norristown 20. Except for Elzar Camper again. He seems to be the his mom's probably sitting there thinking, <laughs> you know. You've done me a blessing. I don't have to do the laundry. Yeah, she's giving thanks today for the mm -hmm. fact that she won't have to uh, to really uh, bleach his uh, his uniform after today's game. And of course, this is the last game of the season for these two very good football teams. Coach Roger Grove for the Eagles, Coach Joe Iacovetti for the Colonials have really brought their teams to play today. 5-18 to go in this ballgame, a big third down play. Travellini in motion, Fulmer with the drop. There's penetration over the middle, he was open. Oh, what an interception by Troy Swittenberg. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll tell you what, Fulmer had the time. There was a quick initial push by the Eagles, but Fulmer had time to deliver, had the man, ticks off his hands, and what a play by Troy Swittenberg. Uh, when you're down in this end, you think to yourself, when a ball gets tipped, uh-oh, whose hand is it gonna fall into? Troy Swittenberg, an absolutely amazing athletic play, doing it on yeah, both ends of the field. He hasn't really gotten the yardage he wanted on the offensive side. A great interception right there. I thought that ball was going into Elzar Camper's hands, and that would have just been 
a, a backbreaker for Norristown. Now they have the ball, but again, they have to go 90 yards. That's right, they're deep in their own territory, but I'm sure Roger Grove will take it anywhere at this point. A uh, little um, confusion there on the initial exchange, and Audley Stewart really not happy. Took a little bit of a loss on that play. Some confusion in the Eagle backfield. Brings up second and long for Norristown. Loss on the play of about a yard, second and 11 for the Eagles. And this is where Coach Grove's creativity has got to come into play. He's got to do something because Audley Stewart's ankle is just not in the shape it needs to be. When you lose the mobility of Audley Stewart, you, you, you lose a lot. He is not the Dan Marino type quarterback that can fight through an ankle and can just you know throw with arm strength. This is a guy that really needs to use his mobility to be successful, and right now he can't use it. The Eagles go back to the shotgun offense. They spread the backs, they spread the wideouts. The penetration's there. Oh boy, I'll tell you, he gets it away at the last second. I thought, boy, how'd you like to lose this game two to nothing? That was mighty, mighty close. Great penetration by the Colonials once again. Back in the Eagle backfield was number 57, Chris Farns. Nice completion outside. Was that to uh, Terrell then, Greg? That was that was to Terrell, and you, you've got to be thinking, this isn't spring, don't lose the baseball game, two to nothing. All this Stewart using all of his time, but still remaining calm, and that's one of the things that, you know, he's really matured into a great quarterback. He knew the exact amount of time he had and got rid of the ball at the last second, willing to take the hit, too, to complete the pass. So now third and eight for the Eagles from their own 10-yard line. Eagles, some confusion. They're going to have to get the playoff quickly. They do. There's the snap. Everybody's coming. Uh, the little screen, the wide out to Swittenberg was the intended play. They had everybody coming hard, and the Colonials, just a fabulous job on defense in this second half. The Eagles, once again, will be forced to punt from deep in their own territory. And I'll tell you, uh, nothing good can happen when you're, when you're stuck this far back in your own territory. Uh, Jeff, we can't say it enough. His ankle is really, you can almost say, making the PW job a lot easier. They know that he doesn't have, you know, with his lack of mobility, he doesn't have the time to move, he doesn't have time to do anything. So why not blitz him, pressure him? They tried to dump the ball off. If he had gotten that ball to Swittenberg, he probably would have had a first down. Unfortunately, it just didn't convert. Hadrick under pressure. Oh, that kick is sky high. It's going to hit, and it's going to take an eagle bounce, but... Not much of one. After the 35-yard line, only about a yard better than the last, last punt that Hadrick was able to get off. So I'll tell you, that was intense pressure. Trey Hadrick trying mightily to get that kick off in time. He did, but the net gain is only about 15 yards, and the Colonials once again will have tremendous field position. The only difference is it's about five minutes deeper into the game. It's the same exact thing that happened. Norsom's got to come up with another big play on defense. If you keep asking your defense to make big plays, sometimes it's not going to be there. And it, we, we've seen this with the Philadelphia Eagles, that you know their defense is their strong point, but you can't ask them to stop everybody all the time. The Eagles with three takeaways today, two interceptions and a fumble recovery. They've coughed it up once themselves deep in Colonial territory. This time it's Justin Pratt again. Some good initial penetration, but he's finished off there by Jameel Butler. I believe the initial play was made by the corner, number four, Ricky Preet. And on, on defense for Norrison, you have to make sure you don't try and do too much. You have to make sure that, you know, if they get five yards, it's not a problem. Make sure they don't get 35. And sometimes when you get deep in here, you say to yourself, okay, we have to try and make some room for our offense. But at this point, you've just got to say, stop them. Do whatever you have to do to stop them and keep points off the board. That was three yards on the play, 2.38 to play in this ball game. The clock continues to run a very fast ball game today. It's second and seven from the Eagle 32 yard line. So whistle on the field. Colonials call time. Coach Iacovetti wants to talk this one over a little bit. And again, the weather seems to have subsided a bit. Greg, it's not raining here at Roosevelt Field, except for just a little bit of spitting. Earlier in this game, it really came down for a period of time, but the weather has subsided. And I, I think with 228 here, uh, Joe Iacovetti is thinking to himself, this is the one. And I think going 35 yards, or less than that at this point, in 228, 